Amylase is a carbohydrate, so remind yourself, amylase is a carbohydrate. And you may also recall from previous tutorials, if you have studied them, that we find amylase in the mouth, in the mouth, and it is also produced in the pancreas. So we also find it in the pancreatic fluid. And of course, we know that that pancreatic fluid enters uh, the digestive system at the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum. Okay, so be aware of those facts before we go. Now, equipment we've got available, which we haven't used before. We have a stopwatch, we have some test tubes in the rack. I'll come back to that in a second. We have some iodine, which if you've looked at qualitative, qualitative reagents, you'll have an awareness of. This here is what we call a spotting tray or a spotting tray. I'm going to show you that pretty much straight away. We have a stirring rod. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a beaker, which we're going to use as a water bath. Uh, and we have a thermometer in it there, as you, you can see, and we have the capacity to warm things up with our Bunsen, okay? So that's the equipment we have. Let's get started in this process. Okay, so we're now looking, we're now looking at a spot, oops, let me just bring you up a little bit, sorry. We're now looking at a spotting tray or a spotting tile, a spotting tray, and as you see here, we have three rows of four, um, of, of th four spots that we can use uh, to, to actually place our uh, solutions. Now, let me show you how we're gonna do this to start with. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to fill these spots with iodine. And I wanna be specific here. I want you to add one drop, one drop of iodine per well, okay, or per spot, per well. Okay, so one drop. Now it looks like I've got a bit more, but that's what we, we want you to do. One drop, please, okay? That's a one there, not an L or an I. One drop. Now I wouldn't normally edit a video sort of post-production, but I just wanted to uh, include an actual image of what this would look like in the real world. I, I made the, I recorded the tutorial before I actually had some snaps in my lab of what this would look like. So I just thought I'd put this in there to show you. Now, one thing I would make clear is I made a mistake in the video just a second ago, twice, when I talked about iodine instead of iodine solution. This is iodine solution, so I have that clear. Now, once we've done that, we're now gonna uh, prepare another stage of our experiment. So let's just, let me just drag you down here. We're gonna take three test tubes, okay? Now in the first test tube, we are gonna place, I'll sort of do it in green here, we are gonna place two centimeters cubed of starch solution, okay, starch solution, okay? In our second one, we are gonna, we are gonna place two centimeters cubed of amylase solution, okay? Amylase solution. And in our third one, we are gonna place two centimeters cubed of a pH buffer solution. Now you might be wondering what on earth is that, James? Well, the role of this pH buffer, this is gonna make sure that when we mix all these together in a few moments time, this pH buffer is gonna ensure that there are not significant changes in the pH level of that mixture. Okay, so that's the role that this plays. Okay, and we have them that um, help to secure the pH level at different points at pH six, at pH seven, at pH eight, which is ultimately why you're gonna repeat the stages of this experiment once complete. But anyway, we have our three test tubes and we have the different components we need. Now, let's go to the next stage. We are gonna combine Sorry, ignore that a second. We are gonna place all three in what we refer to as a water bath, okay? A water bath. And you just notice over here, this water bath has a thermometer in it. And it has a thermometer here because we are gonna maintain the temperature at 30 degrees Celsius. So that's what the temp that's what the thermometer is for to make sure that that is the case. And we are gonna place our three solutions and we are gonna leave them in this water bath for 10 minutes, so we leave for 10 minutes, we leave for 10 minutes, and we're obviously gonna time that specifically, you know, obviously we had that, uh, st the stopwatch can help us with that, we're also gonna use it again in a moment. After 10 minutes has been completed at 30 degrees, to make sure that these are nice and warm and at a consistent temperature, and again, I'm just going to jump in here because I think this is a really interesting image to show you. This is what a water bath is actually going to look like in, in your lab or what you're likely to use. Can I stress to you that the, the, the reason we use this is because we want to equilibrate the, um, the various solutions here so the temperatures are consistent. We're equilibrating those temperatures. We are then going to combine 
all three. So here, you see we have now combined, we have combined all three solutions. So in here, we have our starch solution, we have our amylase solution, and we have our pH buffer solution. So we combine all three. We take a stirring rod, stirring rod, and literally, what do we do with it? Not surprisingly, we're gonna stir this. We're gonna stir this, okay? So we're gonna give it a bit of a stir. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put back we're going to put back in the water. Okay, so we're going to put it back in the water. And what we're going to do is at that point, really important now, once we put it back into the water, we are going to start the stopwatch. Okay, and you might be thinking, okay, we're going to leave it there for 10 minutes. No, that's not what we're going to do. We are, however, going to main, we've got to keep it maintained at the temperature degree, 30 degrees Celsius. Now, what happens? Well, we're now interested in taking an action at 30 seconds at 60 seconds, at 90 seconds, and so on, okay? So what are we actually gonna do? Well, at 30 seconds, we're gonna take our stirring rod. In fact, I mean, I'll kind of draw, I mean, it's not gonna be a very good drawing, but we, you know, we literally take our stirring rod, it's meant to be a, just a straight stirring rod here. We take our stirring rod, we dip it into our solution. We take that stirring rod out, and we are going to place one drop, one drop, of our new solution, we're gonna take one drop and we are gonna place it here in well number one, which of course is gonna be representative of 30 seconds, because we're gonna do this after 30 seconds. Now, of course, we've looked previously with our reagents that if starch is present, when we add, when, when iodine is added to starch, or when starch is added to iodine, it turns a kind of a blue-black color. So this blue-black, I hope you can see that on the screen. I, I tried to make sure there's enough contrast so you'd be able to see it. This blue-black, that means that, our, that starch is, is present in that solution. And you might be thinking, well, of course it is. There's starch solution in that, um, in that test tube, James. Well, that's true, but don't forget that the job of amylase is to break down that starch into simple sugars, okay? It's to break down that starch. So after 30 seconds, we have this, we put, we put one drop, into well one. After 60 seconds, we put another drop into well two. And you can see here, it's still blue-black. We still have the presence of starch. Into well three, <coughs> which is gonna be our 90 second well, we're gonna, after 90 seconds, we're gonna place one more drop. Now, you might notice that something kind of different is happening here. That blue-blackness is kind of dissipating. It's not orange, but we haven't got the same reaction. Something's happening. In other words, what we're seeing now is that the process of amylase breaking down starch into simple sugars is taking place. We now go to uh, well four, and after 120 seconds, we now have all of a sudden a very different solution. Now, if I was to ask you, is there still starch present after 120 seconds? I think you'd agree with me and say, yes, it is. We still have some sort of blueness in the mixture. We go to well five, we're now in 150 seconds. I'll speed this up because you're probably already bored of me doing this. What do we have now? Is there any kind, is there any evidence of starch? Well, we do have a tiny amount of evidence. Now, this is highlighting one of the problems. Can you see that that is not just kind of this orange iodine color? There's still the presence of some, some starch, perhaps at 180 seconds. Let's have a look at this one. Do you guys think there is any starch available. We'll have a close look at this iodine. Now, let me tell you that there is just, just, just evidence there of a tiny amount of starch, but here, seven, tile seven, after 210 seconds, now we have absolutely no evidence. So, what we can say categorically is that here, after 210 seconds, we can say, we can say starch no longer starch no longer present okay would you agree with me that if we've got kind of this blue blackness here there's still a bit a small amount a little bit of starch left and again final little sort of jump in here have a look at uh, the two images i'm going to have, have up on the screen and determine in your own mind after how long was the iodine oh sorry how after how long was the starch no longer present okay so have a little 
have a little look at that and see what you decide. And, and, and on this second image, it's much more clear. I mean, you're probably going to tell me at 330 seconds that all that starch or, or that starch is no longer present. It could, could you argue at 300 seconds that it's all gone? No, we still seem to have a little bit of kind of blue blackness in there. But by 330, five and a half minutes, perhaps it's all gone by that point. Here, starch no longer present. In other words, we could say the reaction is completed, okay? The reaction of amylase breaking down starch into simple sugars has completed, okay? A couple of points before we finish. Can I stress to you that you are gonna be repeating this process numerous times, okay? And you're likely to repeat this probably using pH buffers of six, seven, eight, you might use some others, but they're, they're pretty common. Okay, so pH buffers of six, seven, eight, and you're gonna get different results. Of course, you're then gonna make a tabula or make a table format of your results, and you're gonna plot those, and you'll do that alongside your teacher. Now, a couple of problems that I would encourage you just to consider, a couple of problems that you might have noticed with this experiment, okay? A couple of problems. Well, first of all, first of all, we're measuring or we're taking a sample every 30 seconds. So we can say here the timing is approximate. Okay, the timing is approximate. And that's because as it's only every 30 seconds. So there's a bit of an issue there. Now, how can we solve that problem? Well, we could say, well, take a sample every 10 seconds. That's going to give you a more accurate moment of when the reaction actually completes okay so we could we could uh, work in it that way the other thing i'd say to you is again do you agree with me that here there is some blue blackness you might be saying to me just to my eye james it's just orange i can't see that and that exactly is the point because here people with different eyesight looking from different angles what we, what we can say is that the process itself is gradual so the process is gradual all right so just before the reaction is completed, there's a tiny amount of evidence for, of blue-black color in that solution, all right? So how do we deal with that? Well, we might ask many different people, perhaps we work in a group of three, all three people have to agree there is no blue-black color in there for us to agree that the reaction has been completed. Enjoy this one, guys, it's fun. Uh, get the rhythm of this correct and you'll get some interesting results.